The most valuable rookie cards, part one. What signifies a rookie card? Anyone who deals with collectibles pretty much knows if it comes to baseball cards, it's primarily focused on the rookies. And it's somewhat confusing over the course of time that people have collected cards is which cards are the most valuable. And often it's the rookie, but then which card is the rookie card becomes the question. So how does a player qualify as a major league rookie? Now, this is in the league itself. And we find that to qualify as a major league baseball rookie, a player must not have exceeded 130 at-bats. They get over 130 at-bats, they're no longer a rookie, or 50 innings pitched in the majors. Also, fewer than 45 days on the active rosters of major league clubs, excluding time on the disabled list or any time after rosters are expanded on September 1st in their previous season. So TOPS really began promoting rookies back in its 1959 set. And you have these particular cards within the set that represents the rookie stars of that time. And most of them you probably won't recognize. None of them actually have made the Hall of Fame, but there are several that would be considered to be um, stars or maybe even superstars. So there was uh, Johnny Callison, who basically made his recognition when he was on the Philadelphia Phillies. And we have Bobby Allison, who was prominent in the days of the glory is Minnesota Twins, Jim O'Toole, the Reds, Ron Fairley, the Dodgers, Johnny Blanchard, catcher for the Yankees, kind of a backup to uh, Elston Howard. Jerry Zimmerman actually also became a catcher for the Minnesota Twins, and Gene Oliver and Darren Johnson. So those players are recognized by people who followed baseball at the time, but really no really great players. And you can see the other rookie cards that are represented in this 1959 set. Then we move to the um, 1960 top rookies, and you can see that they're actually using the term rookie star in the title. And you can look over this list and probably not recognize a whole lot of these players, except at the bottom, you'll see a kind of a Hall of Fame superstar in Carl Ustremski, plus a well known power hitter in Frank Howard. Uh, and then there's uh, Jim Cott, who is a Hall of Famer. Uh, played for the Twins. And then we see Darren Johnson again. So he already had a rookie card in 1959, and he's put up again as a, a rookie star. But these were the cards of the 1960s. And what you'll see missing, which actually we'll see later, was a rookie card in this particular set, but not as a rookie star, was um, the first baseman for the San Francisco Giants Hall of Famer, Willie McCovey. So what card is the rookie card? So we take a kind of a player that is so well known as a hitter and a icon in the baseball history, and that is Ted Williams. And with Ted Williams, we find so many cards that basically which one is a rookie, and it's perhaps a rookie of that uh, particular set, but you have his first card and play ball that dates way back to 1939, plus goodies, plus leaf, plus red man, plus Fleer. Uh, and then you have actually two tops cards that are our rookie cards, number one and uh, number 252, all in the same set. And so which of these cards really signifies the rookie card? For most people, uh, the modern card era, they would consider the Tops card, and since number one was the first card, that that might be the rookie card. Um, then you have even later on, you're getting even more complicated in terms of which is the rookie card because you have several rookie cards that fit that definition. And as for example, Barry Bonds. So Barry Bonds has cards of the uh, 1987 when he was a rookie in both Fleer and in. Um, uh, tops, and even in Donruss, as you see, that there are two different pictures on the 87 Donruss relief, and one is not Barry Bond, it's actually Johnny Ray, so this is an era, but also you have um, other cards that are rookies, and then you have cards that preceded that in 1986, which were the kind of uh, updated or the rookies that were in um, 
Tops and Donruss and Fleer. So which one is the actual rookie card and which one is the most valuable? Good question. Of course, then we move on to the 1989 kind of super rookie that kind of really moved this kind of rookie sensation along. And that was the Ken Griffey. And we see that in 1989, he had several cards, each representing different brands and the base sets from Tops to Score to Bowman to Donruss and Fleer. But the big one at the time was the 1989 inaugural upper deck set that became the one that was most cherished, but all these other cards were also considered rookie cards. So which one should you get? And then we have someone who will not make the Hall of Fame probably because of PEDs, but look at all the cards that were considered rookie cards for this individual. And just a year later in 1990, where we have his perhaps his most valuable was the Fleer Alter um, update, but also you had the upper deck and tops and uh, the Donruss, which actually is worth more because we have an era card, and then the Bowman, and then score two cards. One was a hot rookie, one was a score rookie card, Fleer, uh, even classic, and Stadium Club. So which one of these cards is a rookie? Which one is the one in sense that is most valuable, its first card, or what have you? Uh, that's what we're going to try to investigate in this little presentation. So we look at that question, and we look at prominent player, certainly now a Hall of Famer, and Derek Jeter. And we have a card that comes out in 1992 of Derek Jeter. And then we have a card in 1993 that became one of his most valuable, end quote, rookie card. And then we have a card uh, that even says rookie on it in 1995. So for Derek Jeter, his official mainstream base rookie card release was the year 1993. So that is what they consider to be his rookie card. Uh, Derek Jeter's first base card is 1993, but they first appeared in the majors. He first appeared in the majors in 1995, which really should be, according to definition, his rookie year. But any card released prior to that should be considered pre-rookie card. So now we have another term besides rookie. We have pre-rookie. It's identified as given to a card that features an athlete before they participated at the pro level or prior to designated rookie card release year. These cards are often labeled as minor league cards, prospect cards, draft pick cards, collegiate cards, or XRCs, extended rookie cards. Um, so what is the true rookie card? Not rookie, as we kind of talked at the beginning of this discussion, but what is a true rookie card by definition? And we find it's the first trading card to feature an athlete after that athlete has participated in the highest level of competition. Uh, collectors may value these first appearances more than subsequent card issues. So now we look at kind of the Bowman, and we have a Bowman card that's listed as the first Bowman for Freddie Freeman in 2007, and yet... The rookie card in Bowman comes out with its significant RC, representing rookie card, in 2011. And then we have the famous what card is most valuable for the Mark McGuire. And going way back to 1985, a bit before he entered the majors, it was his U.S. baseball team, not even really in the minors, minor leagues in 1985, which considers the most valuable of his cards. And then we move to 1987 when he was his rookie year. But this card came out as a, a rookie um, and was kind of a pre-date card, like a traded uh, or a, um, not a traded, but a um, updated set. And then we have the regular rookie card uh, in tops in 1987. And then we have a card in 1988 that even listed as a rookie, which is 1988. So again, it gets very confusing in this picture of which card is a rookie card and is a rookie card most valuable. So rookie year cards. So here are the most valuable cards of the rookie year for Derek Jeter, 1993. And you see you have a whole host of them, just like we presented on other players before. And a rookie year is identified as given to the cards of a rookie player that are not subset cards, insert cards, online exclusives, food and beverage issues, or cards that are not properly licensed by both the league and the Players Association. So here we have the whole set of basically um, rookie cards and many of them that they're listed as rookie cards but the card of gd you see here are often identified as rookie cards these cards were printed in 1994 1995 after derek jeter's true rookie card year, which was 1993. So these cards then are neither the pre-rookie, the rookie, but they are the post-rookie theme. Uh, they are identifiers as given to the cards that feature a player 
after the rookie season, but in some way, the cards has elements that feed your, the rookie theme. So again, we have this whole host kind of extending a period of time from uh, 1992 all the way to uh, 1995, where all could be rookie cards. Um, so what is a rookie card baseball designation? A rookie baseball card designator is a uh, identifier is given to the card that are the first to feature an athlete after that athlete has participated in highest level competition with his or her respective sport. It must be licensed in both leagues and the players association. And RC identifier is only given to cards that fit this requirement. So rookie baseball cards, a base card from the first year a player is included in a major set. It does not reflect the year the player made his major league debut. And so we have this kind of new definition that is specific for the rookie card as opposed to a rookie or any really uh, definition of being a rookie um, on the card. So 2006, an official rookie card designation was created. And 2006, the Major League Baseball instituted a rookie card logo, only allowing players to be in a base set starting the year of their major league debut. So on those cards, you would see these two designations of rookie card or RC, as you see in the examples for Verlander and for Jonathan India. Um, so the definition of a major league rookie card designation is eligible for official MLB rookie card designation by making the 25 man roster tops in major league where baseball association were kind of the ones who established this. And Tops would continue to produce licensed prospect cards through Bowman, but could not be numbered as part of the regular base set, but coded with an alphanumeric designation. In other words, an alphabet and a numeric designation, as you see here on this card, which stands for uh, Bowman Chrome 25. So that may have used a little bit of clarification. And now we move to the Bowman rookie designations, as you'll see, are kind of uh, exemplified in the cards during this 2006 um, um, era, perhaps. And what we find is 1996, a first Bowman card is not a true rookie card. It doesn't at all, though, take away from its value. So in other words, just because it's not a rookie card and is a first Bowman card, that could have a higher value than the actual rookie card. Uh, first Bowman Chrome is often more valuable, in fact, than a true Topps rookie card. So in 1998 through 2002, um, the designation was changed to rookie. So you'll see these five cards, all of Bowman, 1998 to 2002, all have the uh, rookie card designation underneath the uh, the Bowman uh, label. And then from 2006 to 222, you'll see that the cards include that rookie card, RC indication, located at some aspect of the card in the right corner, the left corner, uh, the bottom left, or the uh, top left, or couldn't even be the bottom right. So all of the cards you have to look for it, but you'll see an RC designation that represents what we've discussed as a rookie card. And this is kind of Bowman, home of the rookie, we'll see. To the collector, though, all of this designation and uh, um, indication and whatever you want to call it, uh, nothing changed. A player's first card appears in the hobby years before the official rookie card. So you'll see this continue to happen in terms of uh, which card is most valuable. Probably the first one that comes out for a lot of people and a lot of sellers, depending on the brand. Regardless of what year a player gets an arbitrarily decided logo, first card, hobby year before the official rookie card, a player's first licensed card with them adorned in a professional uniform, even if that uniform is from a minor league affiliate, constitute a player's defect rookie card. So again, this kind of confusion will continue as we see, is this Mickey Mantle's rookie card? It's the first tops card, but we know that there was prior to this, there was a Bowman 1951 card, which should be his official rookie card based on the definition. And then we've already talked about the Mark McGuire. This is 1984, though, of 85, and yet he didn't enter um, rookie season until 87. Then we have the Cal Ripken, whose rookie year is 1983, but in the Topps update, it was 1982, becomes his most valuable card. Uh, same thing for Kirby Puckett and uh, Roger Clemens. Rookie year was 1985. These are 1984 flare updates. And then we see we have uh, 
Cabrera, who basically had a tops update before the other uh, official rookie cards came out in the base set. And then we've already discussed Ted Williams had two cards. The first top cards may be considered rookie cards because that was the first that appeared in tops um, in 1954. And then we already discussed the Barry Bonds, the kind of pre-rookie cards in the sense that they were the updates of the um, 86 versus his rookie year 87. And then even Sammy Sosa had a card that appeared before his rookie year in 1990. So uh, then we kind of, again, addressed um, Derek Jeter in 1993. It was a 1992 draft pick, but his rookie card didn't occur until 1993, but he really didn't enter the league until 1995. So a lot of confusion, as well as we can look previously in the history of Topps cards. And we have this Phil Negro card uh, in 1965 that says rookie stars. And you would think if you kind of are looking for his rookie card, that would be it. But no, he had a card for the rookie stars of the Braves in 1964. So you'd almost think there were two rookie cards a year apart. Same thing goes for Gaylord Perry, a Hall of Famer, who you kind of saw as 1963 rookie stars and think, that's his rookie card, but no, it was the year before 1962. That is his true rookie card. And then there's the famous Maury Wills, who didn't have a rookie card in tops um, until uh, later. And yet Fleer was the first to come out with a rookie card for him as due to kind of licensing problems with tops and so forth. So prospect cards, first Bowman cards, going to rookie cards, going to RC cards. So we see that in the Bowman kind of aspect, you have a prospect card. Uh, then we're moving to first Bowman card. And then we move to where they actually call it a rookie card, whether it's Bowman Chrome or Bowman Heritage or just plain Bowman. And then we move to the RC, meaning rookie card caption in the left-hand corner or the left-hand um, bottom corner and so forth. Why are rookie cards worth more than other cards of the same player? Well, there's not a, a definite um, explanation for that. And there's several explanations and kind of choose the one you want, but they are usually more valuable than the other cards of the player throughout his, his career. So one reason may be scarcity. They were historically scarcer and harder to come by in top condition than cards issue later in a player's career. So were they really in less numbers than the other cards in the set? Or um, basically they were handled more, so they were hard to get them in top condition? That may have been a reason. Another thing was cost. The first card was cheaper because it was available in unopened packs versus acquiring the card wholesale market later. So we could look back in time, but even as recent as 1989, you would say that well, I opened packs and got a, a, um, a Griffey card, Junior, and uh, it was basically just a card that was in the pack, maybe worth maybe 20, 25 cents. But the card was selling for uh, as high as $40 at the time in 1989. So when 1990 came, there was no packs necessarily that you could just pick up easily. So you would either have to trade or more likely have to pay full price in terms of its value from some distributor or, or uh, individual. And so if you got in the pack, it would be cheaper. And so if you got these cards early, just from packs, they would be basically something that you could really find extra value if you kind of resold them later. Then historically, just the fact of a uh, tradition that coveted in the world of card collecting was the rookie card. That's just the way it is, is the way it's always been to get the first card uh, of the player. And then there's a mystique through all this, especially for players who don't make a big ruckus right out of the gate. So Mike Piazza and and, and Manuel Rivera uh, in that 92 Bowens, uh, they, they could have been overlooked because it wasn't really until later that they kind of emerged as this real kind of uh, super player and then uh, made the Hall of Fame. Uh, but they broke out several years later, though they had certainly a good start to their careers. So now again, extending on this concept of the rookie when and so forth, they become a rookie, what brings about them being a rookie, uh, it all kind of has to do with the 25 and 40 man roster. Now the active roster size uh, is 25 players uh, in 200, 2020. It started that the exception would be up to 28 players on the team. And that 25 players typically consist of five starting pitchers, seven relief pitchers, two catchers, six infielders, and five outfielders. If you look to the right, you'll see what some people have come and put together as the ultimate 25-man uh, roster throughout the whole um, modern baseball era. You can Well, not even modern. There's some players that go way 
way back in time, like Babe Ruth and Roger Hornsby. But these would make up the 25 best players on a roster that some people have kind of construed. You can agree or disagree with it. Uh, now, the 40-man roster is a combination of players on the 26-man roster and the 7, 10, 15-day injured list, the bereavement family medical emergency list, and the paternity leave list, as well as some minor leaguers. And in order for a club to add a player to the, their 26-man roster, uh, the players must be on the 40-man roster. So that's sort of the call-up and, and the way that it's currently working in Major League Baseball. So the September call-up. Okay, what is that? On September 1st, clubs can activate any player on its 40-man roster. Most do not take advantage of, of those spots, so they don't need to. They're not in contention and so forth. Uh, active rosters will expand again to cover 28 players, and teams can carry 14 pitchers at most in order to cut down on the endless parade of bullpen arms. So there has been a history of this kind of September call-up. Sometimes players are called up just given the opportunity to be uh, make the show and get used to playing at a higher level than than the minor leagues, uh, which is frequent. Um, then we can even look at what some people, as you see from Bleacher Report, uh, says are the 10 greatest September call-ups in Major League history. It's always kind of a neat list of all these call-ups, who were the most influential, and uh, starting way back with Stan Musial, and then on to Francisco Rodriguez, J.D. Drew, Fernando Valenzuela, Fred Lynn, uh, Ernie Banks, Randy Johnson, uh, David Price, Jose Canseco, and Billy Hamilton. So if you want to hear the story behind why they were so um, credited and uh, give accolades in terms of being a call player for the, that particular year they came up, you can refer to uh, this reference um, at the top of this slide. Now, Topps logo identification of what is that player? What is a term that they use uh, from 1962 to 2022? And you'll see on this list, boy, it's, it's pretty kind of filled with variety. It's not a consistency whatsoever as we look from 1962, where the cards were uh, labeled Rookie Parade or Star Rookie down to um, uh, the 1981-82, where they begin to use it on the cards, Future Stars, uh, and then they begin to use the word prospects in uh, 79, but again, use it in 92 to 94. Coming attractions and on deck were used in 94. Uh, again, back to prospects, rookie class, rookie, rookie cup. And now we start seeing the symbol uh, of the rookie card. And even Topps is using first year card in 2003, back to future stars and draft picks in 2004, Topps total in first year. And then we do definitely see in 210 to 222. So last 12 years, we see this kind of rookie card RC designation. So let's go ahead and just look at some examples real quick uh, of these Topps cards and what they did to label uh, the cards as this rookie uh, from 1962 to 1994. As I said, the rookie parade, we see the star in the 62 of um, uh, Lou Brock, and then we see called rookie stars, uh, 63 and 64. And then you have um, rookie third baseman. So you have it listed by uh, their positions. Prior to that, it was uh, rookies on the same team. And then in um, 1979, you have um, the prospects uh, listed and they're all on the same team. And then we have the same team as Expo Future Stars. And we also begin to see future stars kind of consistently uh, in the tops in 1987, 89, 90, 91. And then you have the tops glossy where actually just right out says the year the person was a rookie and listed on the card starting in 1988. Uh, we have other designations as you see tops prospects where we're now kind of including uh, players at shortstop with, from all different teams. And as they say, they'll have cards that are really rookie cards, but they're called coming attractions or on deck. Uh, rookie class, um, again, back to rookie card. Um, and we go around and we see the future stars, uh, first year, um, and we see first year listed several times, then rookie cards, rookie cards, rookie cards. And beyond this, we're going to see that that RC logo is consistently on all the cards as we move from really up to 2022. And you can see that rookie card logo in all four corners of the particular card uh, as we see that these cards um, generate more value because of the first card.
So we're going to look, and probably a lot of this will be review of what we've already talked about, but as we look from 1962 to 2000, you once again can see all of the different um, designs in terms of that were used to kind of focus and emphasize the rookie card. Even the years where no designation at all was made of the rookies, and it was just assumed because of the design it was. But for everything from the rookie stars to uh, future and future stars. Now, it's not just Tops that is doing this and kind of, kind of, uh, putting this into the minds of the collector and fanning the fire, but it's also Donruss, Leaf Score, Fleer Ultra, Collector's Choice. So we see that Donruss comes out with, okay, we're going to uh, use our designation, our logo as Rated Rookie. And we see it goes all the way from 84 to 85, uh, way up to the present. And then you have Leaf, who just comes right on the card and says Rookie, uh, or uh, Leaf will say uh, RC Rookie and have a different designation. Score, um, always tend to have some indication, either putting it right on the card as 1990 rookie Juan Gonzalez or the hot rookie kind of insert cards or uh, um, just rookie on the label. And then we have the Fleer Ultra as well as the Collector's Choice, all kind of insinuating that this is their rookie card. Uh, moving on to upper deck, uh, we see that uh, starting in 1990, you see a little symbol there. And then moving on, star rookie, star rookie, uh, plain rookie, star rookie, um, star rookie, uh, all the way. And finally, we look at Pinnacle, and Pinnacle has the 92 rookie prospect, and they kind of use that symbol of quite a bit on their cards. So all these makers are kind of trying to kind of give highlights that this is a card to collect, and we'll tell you it is because we're going to give it the logo representing rookie or star rookie or future star or prospect. So now we're going to look at the history of not only the rookie card, but kind of another symbol that appears in the card that can somewhat be confusing in terms of, is this their rookie card or what's this emblem mean and so forth? And it really is Topps All-Star Rookie Team, where they're basically voting those players that were rookie to the best rookies of that particular year, the following year that they're a rookie. So in 1960, this first appears uh, from the 1959 season, designating with a gold trophy, symbol of a batter on a top hat. So when we look, and here's that Willie McCovey card that was in the 1960s, that different from the other rookies, and that little symbol there, and he is basically an all-star rookie. But in this case, this is his rookie card. And then we see um, that 1961 included Topps All-Star Rookie on the cards with the same design as the rest of the regular issues, but it's basically um, right there uh, on, on the regular series card. So it's not a different card, just that symbol is on that card for that particular player, as you see in Ron Santo here. And so it's like a trophy, but it is standing on a top hat. Then, beginning in 1973, the symbol was changed to a gold cup bearing the words Topps All-Star Rookie. So a little bit of different symbol, but it kind of carries through through the rest of the cards as you see on this Carlton Fist 1973 card, but it continues even into the 1990s with Ken Griffey Jr. So now we're going to see a little bit of change in that kind of um, uh, design of the top all-star rookie. We go from kind of a, a gold base on that 1990 um, Ken Griffey to kind of that cup on top of a kind of a wooden platform all the way through to 2022, as you see in these various pictures. So continue to change, but for the years from 1994 to 2022, it's pretty much stayed the same for those Topps cards. Uh, since the 1960s, top regular issue baseball card sets have included subsets players named All-Star Rookie Team. So now we're going to go back to uh, that period of time where we look at those 1960 rookies, and these were those uh, players that made the All-Star Rookie Team. We've already discussed with McCovey, but there's other players that, again, were not Hall of Famers, but they tended to uh, be stars. And we see in this group, we see the Ron Fairley, Jim Perry, and Bob Allison, and Jim O'Toole. But remember, those players had those rookie cards in 1959, and only Willie McCovey really was a new card. So if you are interested in learning additional information about the baseball card industry, the history of baseball cards, profiting and investing in baseball cards, or ideas to bring fun back to collecting, please be sure to follow us below. And feel free to view our library of YouTube videos 
and take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you would be so kind. Also, check out our eBay store where we have available for many of you the cards shown in these videos.